They say gold is where you find it, but the only thing we can be absolutely certain about is that gold was where somebody else already found it before us. So when researching a new mineral, the first thing we want to do is look for the places it's been found before, and Google Earth is one of the best tools to do this with. But with millions of square miles to search, how do we know where to start? Well, pioneers in other fields often started from a strong foundation built by those who came before them, but the original prospectors often left little knowledge behind. So instead of standing on the shoulders of giants that came before us, we must often, instead, search for the remnants of their footprints. Luckily, there are data overlays which we can add into Google Earth to help us with this, and this video is a brief introduction on how to set these up so that you're able to follow along on future tutorials. Okay, let's get right to it. This is the sidebar where we're going to store all of our overlays and place marks. Right click and add a folder, then Google USGS MR data, click on the MRDS, and then click download data for geographic areas which you choose and then select your state. Finally, select Google Earth as your format and then click on the file that you download. Drag the file into your new folder in Google Earth and then bam, you know where almost every historic mine in your state is now. If you click on a mine, it'll tell you what minerals were produced and now we have tens of thousands of giant footprints. All mines, we didn't have to prospect for ourselves, but now we have instant access to decades or even hundreds of years worth of production records. Okay, that was easy. Now let's add geologic maps. Simply Google USGS MR data again, and now click the geologic maps of US states, and then click your state again. Now click the KMZ, and once it's downloaded, drag that into your Google Earth folder too. Awesome, now we can see both mines and geology. The splotches of color you see are formations, and clicking one will provide names, ages, and a brief description. The lines are either intrusives, impact structures, or fault lines. Overlays are your friend. The more data, the better. So always keep an eye out for useful maps to add. A few useful ones that come to mind are topos, snow cover maps to determine if a distant area is accessible yet, land and mineral ownership, and the public land survey which can be used to locate mines by aliquot parts or to file your own mineral claim. The links to these change often, so I can't keep a video updated, so I'm not going to show any links and you'll need to search them on your own, but many can be found through government agencies such as NOAA and the BLM. Let's look at one example by browsing the BLM's public services and setting up a public land survey layer. Sometimes we get lucky and find a KMZ link that we can directly import into Google Earth, but other times we must set up a link to a WMS server directly, which can be done by first adding an image overlay, pasting a link to a public WMS data source, and then browsing the services on the WMS server, and then finally selecting the data which we're interested in. Still with me? Good. It doesn't do much good to find interesting things if we can't mark them and locate them in the real world. So take a look at this pin. You can drag it to any location you'd like. Maybe, for instance, you'd want to investigate this outcrop. Or you can type coordinates in directly from the sources you've read, and the pin will mark that spot. Similarly, you can draw paths to trace out old roads, or polygons to encapsulate entire areas of interest. Make sure to leave notes so you don't forget why you drew them in the first place. Later, all of these objects can be saved as KMZ files to be exported to a GPS or a phone so that you can later navigate to them directly in the field. And finally, this button allows you to navigate historic imagery, a function commonly overlooked, but I'll show you exactly how useful it can be in a future video. I won't waste time covering basic navigation tools in this video, but suffice it to say, for those completely unfamiliar with Google Earth, you can get by well enough just by clicking and dragging the imagery to move around, and then by scrolling your mouse wheel in and out to zoom in and out. And finally, this button allows you to look up and enter a three-dimensional mode. Okay, we have a solid foundation to start research now, and in the following videos I'm going to show you some basic strategies to begin using these tools to your advantage. And I'm also going to share some of the real world secrets and tricks to prospecting using Google Earth that I've discovered over the years from experience. We'll see you next time.